Hello, my name is Juan Manuel Bolivar from Complutense University of Madrid. I welcome you to a lecture New Reactor Designs on the advanced module Cross Intensification and Scaling. In this lecture, we are going to learn why new reactors designs are needed in biocatalysis and which are the working principle of the new reactors. The reasons why we need new reactors in biocatalysis can be looked into. One are the limitations of the conventional reactors, and second are the demands of the new biocatalytic reactions. Regarding the limitation of conventional reactors, there are very well-known facts where the design of the conventional reactors is not sufficient or is not sufficiently good. For example, cases like multi-phase reaction limited by the mass transfer, the needs that we have for a better scale-up processes, the needs that we have for a better process design, in the direction of accelerated bioprocess development and the need of process intensification. Regarding the demands of the new biocatalytic reactions, we have a demand to uh, set up multi-step reaction with several enzymes catalyzing several reactions are aimed. The need to combine the chemically catalyzed reaction with enzymatically catalyzed reaction the need or possibility to use new reaction media beyond traditional water-based mediums or uh, mediums based on organic solvents, and the fact that in many cases, new fantastic enzymes catalyzing new uh, fantastic reactions are very slow while very fast and it's difficult to operate them in conventional reactions. So if we try to uh, summarize, the, the aim of uh, that new reactor should have could be maximize the reactor performance in a specific case where a need it is identified. Here we have like three uh, uh, potential selected case. One, it is multi-phase reaction limited by the mass transfer. Second, where multi-step uh, enzymatic cascades want to be implemented. And third, it is to fulfill the, the call to move from the batch to continuous processes. In the figures, you have the illustration of uh, two of these cases. No? The case here on the, on the left, you have a solid liquid gas system. So the enzyme will be immobilized into a porous uh, material. So the reaction is taking place inside the, the material. The catalyst it is in a, in a liquid, so it's mass uh, uh, transfer from the, from the liquid to the solid material. And one of the suffering is a gas, for example, oxygen. So the oxygen has to be transferred from the gas. To the liquid and eventually diffusing to the to the material. So it's not just important the focus on the performance of the mobilized enzyme on the kinetics, but the mass transfer from gas to liquid, from liquid into the solid, can be the right limiting step. And reactor should provide excellent performance regarding that. The second example that you have illustrated here, that is reaction work. It is, in this case, interesting to, to produce a certain uh, product where different reactions in series in parallel are involved. And it is interesting to have solution where at the catalyst level or at the reactor level, these uh, reactions and the catalyst could be assembled. One uh, kind of reaction that are happening uh, Taking a relevance and, and attentions in the, in the community, it is an evolution of the traditional feedback reactors. The feedback reactors are tubular, continuous uh, reactors where the catalyst is packed uh, inside in the form of immobilized enzyme. This system has the immediate advantage that it's possible to have a high concentration of the catalyst. If we have a high concentration of the catalyst, we will be able to they fulfill a high volumetric activity and then probably to have short reaction times while having high conversions and then high productivity into the system. Also, the fixed bed uh, reactor are very useful because of the modular character. We can assemble reactors with one enzyme, so different enzymes, to uh, fulfill the design of a cascade reaction. However, they are very well known drawbacks 
that are limiting the design and the performance of the systems by the lack of the control of the dynamics through the bed and the mass transfer limitation that could be again the limiting of the reaction but not the intrinsic kinetic of the enzyme. Try to solve some of this uh, current limitation of the miniaturized uh, uh, fish bed reactor, new reactor design were developed following the principle of the microfluidic reaction. This they can be very useful for both uh, the reaction with free enzymes and reaction with immobilized enzyme, but always with a multi-phase system. In this first figure, you have a liquid liquid uh, system where the enzyme it is in this one phase and it's going to be a, a transfer between the phases, probably the rate limiting the step of the performance of the enzymatic reaction. If a microfluidic reactor is used, a microfluidic will be to miniaturize the dimension of the diameter in such a tubular reactor, the interfacial area is going to increase. If the interfacial area is going to increase, the, the transfer rate is going to be accelerated and probably not limited. The consequence will be probably to have a fast reaction rate. In the second example, we have a wall coated micro reactor. So in this case, the enzyme is immobilized on the internal walls of the tubular rack. Now the miniaturization of the diameter is going to have a double effect. On one hand, it's going to increase the specific area so we can have a high concentration of the enzyme into the reactor associating with a high potential volumetric activity. But also when we are decreasing the diameter, we are decreasing the diffusion distances, so we are, we are enhancing the transport rate. So in this configuration, the, the, the goal of this uh, reactor design will be to maximize the transport rate while maximizing the engine activity under the constraint, of course, of maintaining the biological function. One more evolution of uh, the microfluidic reactors will be the one that tried to solve the challenge of operating gas liquid or gas liquid solid reaction. In this example, you have a gas liquid solid reactor where the enzyme, for example, will be mobilized on the internal surface of the, the tube and we have a miniaturization of the diameter of this, uh, this channel. The miniaturization is going to have associated an increase of the specific area, so increase of the volumetric activity of the enzyme decrease of the diffusion equidistance, so enhancing of the tra transport rate through the liquid. But also in this case, as we are going to increase the specific area, we are going to increase the uh, volumetric mass transfer coefficient from the gas to the liquid, while probably satisfying a high reaction rate while accelerating the transport rate. Another potential use of the miniaturized uh, reactors is the possibility of working under non-conventional conditions. In the sample you have in this uh, figure will be the case of a pressurized reactor for oxygen-dependent transformation in single phase. The reaction units will be a fixed back reactor with the associated intrinsic advantage that we can have a high concentration of enzyme and then a high volumetric activity into the reactor. This reaction is going to consume oxygen, cell gas, so in any other reactor configuration, we will need to have a transfer of the oxygen from the gas to the liquid to the solid, probably limiting the overall performance. But a non-conventional condition will be to have to be able to operate under a high pressure. If we operate under a high pressure, we are increasing the solubility of the oxygen. So if we are combining the reaction unit with a previous mixing where we are uh, mixing the, the gas, the air, oxygen, with, with a liquid, in a pressurized reactor, we could uh, create a liquid, single liquid uh, phase with a high concentration of the oxygen, able to satisfy the high demand of this substrate at the fixed bed reactor. Again, the goal of this uh, reactor will be, in this case, to delete the need of the transport rate while maximizing the enzyme activity under the constraint of maintaining the biological function of enzyme inside the reactor. To summarize, 
high performance reactors are very important at the model biocatalysis. This could be to achieve process intensification in different biocatalytic applications, to accumulate new types of reaction optimally, probably with new features, with new demands, and to expand the boundaries of known reactions. The miniaturization is often the key to enhance performance. And this uh, enhanced performance is in the most of the cases based in the possibility to improve the mass trap. To maintain the biological function, focus on enzyme stability is essential for integrative development. Here you have some recent references about new reactor designs focused on flow microreactors that could be useful to consult. Thank you very much. Thank you.